This is a cello. It's made out of wood, primarily. And um, it's a hollow box, a resonating chamber. It's like all the members of the string family. Same central shape with two F holes here. This is the bridge which carries the vibrations of the strings. When the strings are made to vibrate by the bow, the string vibrates and the vibrations go through the bridge onto the belly of the cello, carried by the um, sound post, which is under this foot of the bridge. And that carries the vibrations to the back of the cello. So that gets both the back and the top vibrating. And it really amplifies the sound that the vibrating string makes. And the end pin of the cello is um, this piece here, which is made out of steel, I guess. And it's very sharp at the end. And we use it to place the cello on the floor so that it doesn't slide all over the place. And we'd be chasing it all over the map if it didn't stay put like that. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes when we, have, when we have floors that are not made out of wood or soft enough material, for example, a slate floor in a, if you're playing in a church, uh, end pins will go sliding and, and make a rather annoying sound. I acquired this cello about five years ago. Um, it was made in Chicago. This is an American cello. Uh, a lot of string instruments, you know, the famous instruments by Stradivarius and Guarnerius, they're, they're Italian. And the Italian instruments are, generally speaking, the most coveted. Um, but this was made by a man named Carl Becker Sr. in 1929. And uh, Carl Becker Sr. is emerging as uh, the great American maker of the 20th century. There are many of his instruments around, and he made not only cellos, he made violins and violas. His son, Carl Jr., was also a great maker, and his grandson is running the shop now, and that's from whom I purchased this cello. Before I had this, I had an old Italian cello. It was made by a member of the Guarnerius family, Joseph Guarnerius Filius Andreas, Joseph, son of Andreas Guarnerius. And I was having trouble with my old Italian instrument. You know, old instruments are very, they're hard to adjust. They're finicky when the weather changes. They're, they're a little tricky to play. Uh, and I was, being, uh, I was pretty frustrated with my instrument at that time. And this student comes in with this Becker cello, and it sounded great. I said, let me, let me play this thing. So I played a few notes, and I said, oh, God, this is so easy to play. I wish my cello were like this. And I never forgot that. And then f years later, when I decided I needed to sell my cello, I said, well, what am I going to get? What am I going to plan? So I put the word out, anybody know of any old Beckers out there? And sure enough, this came to me. My father was an amateur violinist and a music lover. Uh, and there was always music in the house when I was growing up. I grew up in, in Cambridge, Mass., uh, just about half a mile from the Harvard campus. I, I, my father didn't teach there. I was a townie, right? But uh, I had two older brothers, and one of them played the piano, and one of them played the violin. And my father had in mind that he, with three boys, well, let's have a piano trio. So I was the designated cellist. And I started with piano lessons, but that, uh, that I didn't take to the piano in particular. Reading two lines at once was, like, way over my head. And... Um, I was, I was given cello lessons, so I, was brought, I remember this. I was brought to my very first cello lesson. I was all excited, but I didn't confess to my parents that I had no idea what a cello was. I was eight years old, and I said, you're going to play the cello. Great, I'm going to play the cello. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. So I walked into my lesson, and there was my teacher, and they had an instrument there for me, and I looked at it. Aha! <laughs> so that's what it is. And now here I am. There was one year, my second year of taking lessons, where I would go for, without unpacking my cello from week to week. And uh, I saved, I, it was a local music school, it's doing very well now, called the Longy School of Music in Cambridge. And my teacher there was a woman named Hannah Sherman. She wrote on my report card, you know, I got my little report, and I got a D. And it says, Jerry has made as much progress as he can without practicing.
I practiced a little, not much. It was when I was about 13 or 14 that I really got interested in it. And from then on, it was very hard to separate me from the cello. I tell my students that um, we spend, as cellists, 95% of our training learning to play the melody and 5% of our training learning other things. And then once you're out playing professionally, you realize that you're going to play 95% of the time following other people who are playing the melody. Yeah.